Ah, April 11, so like 2022. Half cast 279. Track episode track. 279. Let's go. Of course, I have a few things to share with you guys. An evening of reflection. Shall we? Woman who attacked a black teenager while falsely accusing him of stealing her phone pleads guilty to hate crime charge. (laughs) What's upsetting to me is they didn't immediately treat this as a grown woman putting her hands on a minor. They sought to see if she was justified first because it was a black child. The California woman who falsely accused a black teenager of stealing her cell phone and then attacked them in a New York City hotel lobby, pleaded guilty to unlawful imprisonment in the second degree as a hate crime the Manhattan District Attorney's Office announced. In December 2020, Maya Ponsetto was seen on video attacking a 14-year-old Keon Harold Jr., who was with his father, a musician in the Arlo Hotel. Ponsetto said she thought he had her cell phone, but investigators later determined he did not. Video of the incident quickly went viral, with many accusing Ponsetto of racially profiling the teen, an accusation she has denied. Yeah, I have plenty of black friends. The incident also occurred as continued calls for racial justice and police reform were the highest they'd been in years due to the deaths of black people like George Floyd and Breonna Taylor at the hands of law enforcement officials. This just gives me the whole vibe that whether she was right or wrong, it didn't matter. She just knew the police were going to be on her side when they showed up. The plea deal requires Ponsetto, 23, to get her ass beat. No, to follow the probation terms for a separate case in California, attend counseling, and avoid further criminal incidents. If she doesn't comply, she get her ass beat. No, Ponsetto could go to prison for up to four years, prosecutors said. But if she successfully follows those terms, she can replead the felony charge to a misdemeanor of charge of aggravated harassment in the second degree. Whatever happened to pressing charges for assaulting a minor? Ponsetto's attorney, Paul D'Amelia, said his client is grateful for the plea deal and she has been leading an exemplary life since the incident. It must be lovely to make unfounded accusations assault minors, and then go back to your comfortable, peaceful life. You send me a postcard. We are appreciative of the district attorney's thoughtful and empathetic approach to finding an acceptable conclusion, especially in light of the unreasonable pressure brought to bear by many voices not familiar with the more granular details of what occurred that evening, D'Amelia said. Ms. Ponsetto looks forward to her eventual final plea to the harassment charge, a plea that we feel more realistically reflects her actions that night at the Arlo Hotel. It is Miss Ponsetto's wish that Keon Harrell accepts her regrets and apology for her behavior that evening and that all involved can move forward with added insight and compassion. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> District Attorney Alvin Bragg said Ponsetto displayed outrageous behavior. That's putting it very mildly. As a black man, I have personally experienced racial profiling countless times in my life, and I sympathize with the young man victimized in this incident. Bragg said this plea ensures appropriate accountability for Ms. Ponsetto. I don't think it does. Me personally, I don't. By addressing underlying causes for her behavior, and ensuring this conduct does not reoccur. For me, it's just knowing that if this young man would have put his hands on that woman, even out of self-defense for herself, the narrative would have completely forgotten how this started in the first place, that she initiated everything. Man lived with roommate's corpse for a month. If there was a better way to advertise for Glade plugins, 
a man in Michigan allegedly failed to report his roommate's death. I forgot and lived with the corpse for a month, according to police. Oakland County Sheriff's Office detectives arrested Mark Allen Means, 58, after they found the body of Michael Leroy Wagner, 76, at a home in Caberfay Trail near Detroit on Tuesday. Police arrived at the home to perform a welfare check and found Wagner's body in the bathtub when they eventually entered the home, according to Fox 2. What level of normal did that place smell like that he was just okay with a corpse hanging out in the bathtub? Following an autopsy, it was determined Wagner suffered from underlying medical conditions and died of natural causes. Officers later ruled out foul play and ruled the death was an accident due to a fall in the bathtub, according to the network. Authorities said Wagner had died between March 7th and March 10th. So what was he just like? I don't really use the bathtub like that anyway. <laughs> he can hang out there until I figure out where to put him. <laughs> According to an OCSO booking report seen by Boston 25 News, Means could not say why he did not report the death, but said he realized it was about time to report it to authorities. Means, who had lived at home since 2015, originally told deputies that Wagner had been asleep and did not want to awaken him, according to Fox 2. Online booking records seen by Newsweek said Means was charged with obstructing failure to report a crime on April 5th. The online document said he is being held in the Oakland County Jail on $5,000 cash, surety, or 10% bond. Newsweek has contacted the OCSO for comment. Florida man killed family dog to avoid apocalypse prosecutor argues a florida man who was discovered living with the decomposing bodies of his family and pet dog murdered them to save them from the upcoming apocalypse prosecutors argued monday so here's the whole thing about saving someone from the apocalypse if we're all gonna die anyway then you're really not saving me from anything are you anthony todd 46 was found at his home in celebration which is a Hell of a city name or town name on January 13th, 2020, when Osceola County deputies and FBI agents were executing an arrest warrant on federal health care fraud stemming from a physical therapy practice he operated in Connecticut. He has a whole lot going on. He's counting on this apocalypse to happen more than anybody else. Todd's sister had also asked for a wellness check after not hearing from the family since the day after Christmas. Yeah, he really looks like he's geared to survive the apocalypse. He's about two Twinkies away from oblivion itself. Inside the home, authorities were greeted with a foul order and found the bodies of Todd's wife and children and the family dog wrapped in blankets in Todd's bedroom. An autopsy on his children, four-year-old Zoe, 11-year-old Tyler, and 13-year-old Alec, his wife, 42-year-old Megan Todd and family dog Breezy found toxic amounts of Benadryl and stab wounds. Todd has already pleaded not guilty to four counts of first-degree murder and one count of animal cruelty. Assistant State Attorney Daniel Pinnell told the jury Todd was concerned about Tyler because the boy was faster than his siblings and potentially could have escaped. Todd later told detectives he and his wife had agreed to kill the children and themselves to avoid an approaching calamity. Now, every year, every two years, three years, whatever, some nutcase always comes out of the woodwork and claims end times, doomsday, uh, apocalypse. And the only thing that happens is you have to wake up and face the same problems today that you had to face yesterday. What made them think that this would be any different? The white two-story house where Anthony and Megan Todd live with their three children remained a crime scene Tuesday, January 14th, 2020, the day after four bodies were found inside. Everybody needed to die in order to pass over to the other side together because the apocalypse was coming, Pinnell told jurors. He allegedly told detectives his wife stabbed herself but did not die. The defendant told law enforcement that Megan did that to herself and as best as she tried, that didn't work. Pennell said, and so the defendant took a pillow and suffocated Megan Todd as well. If he really felt like this was the way 
things had to happen. Why did he chicken out? Why wasn't he found dead in a house with everyone else? Or, I'll do you one better, why didn't he lead by example and take his life first? In jailhouse writing since his arrest, Todd has claimed his wife poisoned the children in their desserts and then stabbed them. The defense plans to make opening statements after the prosecution rest. Man slam for a hiding girlfriend's passport to keep her from taking trip. Don't be childish and hide her passport. Be an adult and get her pregnant. Commenters supported a woman in a popular internet forum who revealed that she ransacked her boyfriend's apartment after she realized he hid her passport to prevent her from visiting a friend in Mexico. If you don't trust her, just say that then. An anonymous woman who goes by Don't Steal My Passport, it's a Reddit, posted about her situation to Reddit's Am I the Asshole form, where it amassed 23,000 upvotes and 1,400 comments, many condemning the man's behavior as manipulative and a form of psychological abuse. I wouldn't even get mad. You let her go. You let her have their fun. You let her have fun. In the post title, Am I the Asshole for Ransacking My Boyfriend's Apartment, the woman, 25, explained that she has been dating her boyfriend, Jake, 34, for eight months. She said their relationship was going well until she decided to move in with him a few months ago. Since then, he's been getting kind of possessive and protective, the post read. I immediately told him to cut that shit out because it's off-putting. And things seem to get better. Good for you, sweetheart. The woman explained that her friend from Mexico is getting married and that she's been excited to fly down for over a year since the engagement. But the woman said Jake said he doesn't want her to go. He says Mexico is too dangerous, even though I've been there many times and even lived there for a year. Speak Spanish, have friends there and know my way around the post read. No matter what I say, he doesn't want me to go. I can only speak for myself when I say this guy's an asshole. <laughs> you don't hide her passport. Either you should have made arrangements to go with her or you support her for a safe trip. A few days ago and the day before the trip, the woman noticed that her passport was missing from her nightstand. She said she looked all over the apartment but was unable to find it and knew she would not have time to get a new one since the trip was the next day, she said she asked Jake about it and he acted a little suspiciously, but she dismissed it because he did not think he would take it. But since he had been giving her some red flags, trust your gut, the woman started thinking he did take her passport and decided to thoroughly search through the entire apartment. I started off carefully picking through drawers and cabinets, but as my anger grew, I became a lot less careful, the post read. I started turning out drawers, pried open a briefcase, made a total mess, but I found it. It was behind some books on the bookcase in his study. I never go into a study. He definitely put it there. When Jake came back, he told the woman he was furious for going through his belongings and ransacking his place. He also told her that he would eventually give him the passport back and there was no need for her to go crazy. When were you going to give it back? After she missed her flight, you asshole? She said she is angry that Jake took her passport and that she does not believe he planned on giving it back. I don't either. This is only my third serious relationship and I have no perspective on this kind of thing. Am I the asshole for overreacting? No. And ransacking my ex-boyfriend's place, the post concluded. In an update, the woman clarified that she does not think she did anything wrong in the situation. You just found out that he wasn't the one for you. It just took you a while. But that she was in an initial state of shock that made her question everything. According to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, victims of gaslighting and emotional abuse can often find themselves questioning their sanity and second guessing their thoughts and decisions. Comments. Here's some comments. Here's some perspective. Your boyfriend is escalating. One user commented. He's starting to do bigger and bigger things. He started with small attempts at controlling you, and he's trying to move into gaslighting you. If the pattern holds, the real abuse comes next. That's scary. If he'll take your passport to keep you from going to Mexico, he'll take your driver's license to keep you from leaving him. 
Another comment read, move out immediately and don't look back. Another user wrote, this is the start of an abusive relationship. He is starting lightly with the controlling so that you get used to it, that you even question that you are an asshole for looking for your passport that he stole means that he is already succeeding. Fun show, fun show, fun show. That being said, I'm going to wrap this one up, but I'll be sure to talk to you guys very, very soon. Adios.